so um hmm. so guys i'm trying to learn react and um i've done quite a bit i've covered uh, some you know some basics this is i'm trans uh, transitioning from uh, python uh, which, which is a uh, back-end uh, uh, language uh, programming language now i'm traf uh, trans uh, transferring the same same knowledge <coughs> into like deep javascript uh, because uh, react is actually uh, javascript uh, html and css infused together to create a framework so i know we may have a different uh, definition but that's how i understand it and i'm sharing it from my point of view you know i'm not um, like an expert and i believe uh, anyone who is watching this you can tell or you can tell me if that's your definition or that's how you view it it's actually very good to have your own definition of uh, what something is to make it easier for you to understand and then break it down that's how i normally like learning you break it down into smaller pieces and then those smaller pieces you create um, like a map or a relationship between uh, you know those uh, small pieces and then once you fit the pieces together then then you are likely now to understand the language like understanding the you know you're not going to be like an expert but uh, you'll be able to get the, the whole picture of the language what is it about and um, I, I don't know get a, a bit of knowledge about it so that's it so right now i want to give you a summary of what i've learned so far i have been learning for this is my uh, this is my third week yeah this is my third week since i started running react i've done a quite a bit of uh css uh html and then you know uh, once you start learning web design or web development in general you keep on going deep and deep and you don't want to stop it's like it's, it's addictive you know i started with um uh, what do we call i started uh, i was interested in making uh, uh this let me show you this i don't know whether you can capture that what, what what is that what is that i don't know whether that you're seeing that one uh it's called basically i call that in category of networking and that's where i started i did quite a bit of it you know until i learned that uh i wanted to become a penetration tester to be honest that's what i wanted to be i wanted to poke holes in applications you know and improve the efficiency usability or uh, like i wanted to be that guy you know i was so much inspired by what do we call this guy is it bill gates oh the person who was uh no he's a tech uh, survey tech survey i think that's a good name uh he, he was uh like you know trying to break things you know breaking things you know you're learning by breaking things and then putting them together uh seeing the the vulnerability and stuff and then improving them and then you know like i uh, think the guy who want to challenge the technology i wanted to be that but how we become a how do you become uh able to challenge the technology if you you know like you haven't uh, understand the technology behind you did have to be a master of a language to poke its hole you know and improve it that's how creativity and innovation comes in that's according to me so that's what i i was doing and then then i started uh, i learned that to be a good penetration tester or a software tester you really need to know a bit of python or any scripting language but preferably i came to understand that python was much easier compared like an entry entry language you know having coming from management uh, background then i'll transition to technology then i started uh, doing quite a bit you know like 
Python there, Python there, I, I took some courses, I dropped, you know, I was still, that time I was, uh, was in campus, so I was still doing um, my course, my university course then, and I have, uh, what, and now I started becoming interested in becoming a petition tester, then I started learning a Python, and then from Python, now, Python, I'm good, no, I'm not an expert, but I think uh, what I've learned in Python, I it's an enough for me to be able to create a project, you know. But to create a project, I need a good um, visuals, like a, what do you call the UI. I need the UI. So that's how needs comes. You start learning HTML. I started learning HTML. Then I saw it was boring. Then I went ahead to make it even much look great. I love, you know, I love seeing things that look nice, you know, well designed stuff. So, you know, that the whole graphic stuff. And UI design so I was interested in that so that when I started uh, doing uh, some more uh, some I would call it uh, a good deal of CSS and then now uh, JavaScript became a problem that's where now I dropped everything now and focused on my you know <laughs> my course hey, but which alone I realized no that wasn't you know this it's not hard nothing is hard <laughs> so all here you know so i decided now uh, let me go to javascript and now i started uh, doing javascript here and there you know i introduction yeah, the basic of javascript and stuff you know like i started become fascinated by what javascript could do you know like being able to manipulate uh, what i've created in uh, html and css now you know just having something static to having a bit of dynamics uh, you know and that beauty of movement in you know in a web uh, in a you know like um what do you call it in a document like html document and stuff so uh, that was fascinating to me but i realized that was not even more stronger there was even more power when it came to back end so now I, it was like a coincidence like trying to figure things out when you enter the technology world it, sometimes people enter from a different uh, background and you find yourself in technology and you start liking it you know development stuff that's if you're curious like me so but back then i had time so i could waste a lot of i wasted a lot of time doing creating and breaking you know it wasn't successful the penetration test first of all if you case don't let nobody lie to you that you're going to be a good penetration tester who doesn't know how to to, who does not understand this type of technology, do not understand this type of language. Trust me, it will take you, they are lying to you, definitely. They are lying to you, telling you that you are going to become a good penetration tester or software tester when you do not understand the architecture behind, the functionality behind, the language, the technology behind. There's no, there's, you're not going to become good in anything. Like, you're not going to be good in penetration testing. So that's why I decided that was a fact to me. I don't know about you because hey, people have a different opinion. And some of these things you hear people saying, <laughs> they just mere, you know, hopes, hopes to keep you watching their videos. Like people wanna want your view so bad that they can they can do whatever they want. Do they they can even lie to you that you can become this when you don't have this. These things are they're not procedural. I would say they are procedural, but uh, uh, what I'm saying is these things are uh, somehow interconnected. There is a relationship between what people do, the type of career path. Most of people who are good in this area, uh, depending on where they started, like me, you see, I was jumping all over, trying to test this, dropping, wasting a lot of time. You know, like I didn't have like a specific path, and that was a problem. It's a very big problem people are having, especially when you enter technology. But the more you proceed, you start now having to niche down. Niching down is like. Uh, Having a straight path this is what I want to do. This is what I'm learning technology so that I have a specific goal. So mine uh, shifted. Now I do not want to become a penetration tester. I want to become first a developer. <laughs> then as I develop things, I start seeing, you know, in developing even better software because now I understand my perspective was to break something. So I do not want something that is br someone can break. I want to, you know, make a better software, you see. Uh, if it's website, I want to create a safest website ever, uh, more functional, better usability, UI, all these things. I want, I want it all. I want it all in my website. So let me cut your story short.
and tell you what I've learned so far today. That was my actually my initial conversation with you. I uh, will have to refer to my notes as usual. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do not want to get lost. I I love keeping you know keeping records of what I'm learning. It's it's a, it's a good way. It all depends on. By the way, let me not lie to you. I've also done a bit of uh, data analysis, but data analysis is very interesting. And I, I, once you do Python, you know it's very hard to avoid data analysis, pro data processing, data visualization. All this is like a data science, you know. But now, mostly I won't do data analysis. I find it uh, much an easier path to enter before I can transition to data. But all these those are goals, you know, because I love Python so much. I love Python. I love what Python can achieve. You know, it's it's magical. So to me it's it's a great technology. So so uh my you know my combination of my web development uh, uh, journey it's uh, to learn Django, be good in it, then learn React and then build a very nice site for myself of course. <laughs> This could be anything, but mostly it could be a product that, you know, like a SaaS product. And that's my dream. Now, I'm very early to that goal, but trust me, I'm going to reach there. And as, you know, God willing, I'll, I'm going to, like, try and document everything that I'm doing right now. Because, you know, I want to keep the documentation. You know, I want to know what I've been doing, you know, my achievement. Uh, that's the, actually the point of this video. But I don't mind if you subscribe, guys. It's fine. Okay. So here we have React. Let me. I'm going to make it very, very simple. Very, very simple. I'm not going to use any jargon because I don't even know many. Uh, I'm not going to be. I'm going to be very specific, very specific and precise. So one, I'm talking about. We have a, what we call um, at the top. We have React. What is it? I told you React is a framework, so it's a combination of three languages, if I'm not sure. So we have what we call um, HTML, we have CSS, and then we have uh, JavaScript infused together like this. You know, it's a framework that you can combine to get uh, benefits of these three languages. And then once it's combined, it's called JSX. All together. Once you combine HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, once you fuse them together and you create a framework, you get a language known as JSX. Together. Are we together? Then JSX is the language now. Although in React, there is a, you know, there's an interchange between using a pure JavaScript sometimes. And uh, mostly when it comes to logic, uh, JavaScript is the main, it's the main pure JavaScript but it's inserted using curly braces you insert it in a document i know most people who are, you know understand this type of technology you know what i'm talking about i'm talking about this let me try to draw something that you know something that will make sense to you i'll give you an example for you state then i don't, don't don't even mind what is it but uh it's just something just call it something this this is an uh, example of uh, logic functionality you see something like this i don't know if you can see okay yeah there there use states use states this is just an example of a logic that you can insert inside the document uh, to enable uh, even more functionality or that dynamic uh, perspective of uh uh, websites being able to you know change stuff in here and there now let me cut the story short so we have uh, uh we have react there as a framework then we come together we get components now now we divide it like this to get components then inside components how do i explain this i want to make it very uh, very very easy very easy very easy yum yep 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 yeah. I don't know if you can see this diagram. This is a simple diagram I was trying to draw. Uh, it's a simple diagram I was trying to draw to illustrate what exactly what is the relationship. This is actually how I learn things here. Yeah? And uh, I don't know if this might be the best for me. I know visualization, I love visualizing uh, things. Thing. <laughs> visualizing things. 
I love that a way of learning. So at the top here, we have React. Yeah, we have React. Then we have component. Then components is divided into two. There is uh, two types of components. What are they? Two type of components are it's the functional component, which is actually the one that I'm trying to focus on. I don't know currently. I do not know much about the class uh, uh, class. Uh, uh, class component, but I'm very sure that uh, I understand the the dynamics of functional component. So there's functional component and then there's class uh, component. Then now components, they are called components in plural, 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 plural. And then uh, once you branch now, let's leave the class component and then follow the path of a uh, functional component. This is where you create a function by declaring it. For example, you. Uh, but you declare a function by uh, like a variable. I'm talking about using the arrow, what do we call the arrow function. The arrow function. For example, uh, uh, my component function, my component. I don't know if you can see this. I don't know. I don't know. I've tried to learn how to illustrate things. This is the worst thing to. I'm not the best illustrator. But chill. Look. There is the functional component, and this functional component uh, used, uh, used not to have what we call, it could not manage uh, states until uh, historically it used not to be able to manage states. Until it, uh, the version 16.8, uh, version 16.8 is where it started to have uh, what we call hooks and those hooks now are the one that uh, giving the functional component to be able to handle states now in hooks we have what we call the use states and then the use effects use state and then the use. so i want you to go hand in hand yeah? you know how to, uh, make it very easy for you to understand if you are maybe you are new and to react now and inside these states uh, we have the use state and use effects I think that's where now I am. Now, how do you, uh, like example of how you can illustrate this, how do you illustrate this uh, this new functionality, you know, like this new feature of hooks uh, with the use state and the use effect, how do you illustrate it? So first of all, you have to import React. Remember, this is like when you are you're using a framework, mostly there is something I've seen commonality, commonality when it comes to Python. When I was learning Python, then I started doing Django, it's a framework, it's actually the major and most uh, sought after um, framework. I realized there's something like, they, they always have this like, kind of getting some, uh, some piece from somewhere, like a module, a library. You put it somewhere and then you use it. So you can't use anything when it's not in, you have to import it inside where you're working. Like let's say if you have like a app, uh, app.py, if that's a file, you're working on that file, you have to import it in that file. So and this is the same, same case here. So you import it, you import uh, React in capital data, uh, in what we call not the uh, title caps, yeah? title caps. You import it in title caps and then after that, you, you you put a comma and then you put the curly braces. I show you the curly braces. The one look like this. Yep, curly braces. You see it on here. I don't know how to illustrate things. Now, once you do that, then you see from React. Now it have to be in quotes. Yeah, React. Now you have started. Now you have started. Now uh, becoming a developer. I'm just kidding though. But that's how you do it. That's how you import it. This is how you import it. I hope you can see it here. Once you import it, you have to now declare your function component. So what you do is a function, my component, and then you can use an arrow function, but uh, I prefer using arrow function because they are easier to write and they are also easily readable. So that's what I'm going to talk about. So then you have the um, you have my component you have the equal sign then you have the what we call this uh parentheses yeah we call this parentheses then you have the parentheses then you have the equal i do i use this hand the right hand to do like this this is a symbol of a greater than it's actually the strong hand most of time 
there are people who use left but since i'm a right handed person i normally like this so once i do like this i'm talking about equal all equal or greater than equal or greater than then you have the card braces and now that's where you put your you know your arguments there you put your arguments like for example this one is uh, defining another constant the constant which is state and you set uh, you state so you have to set it you have the first state so you have the it, it take a list it's, called, it's, a, it's a list of two things it's a list of um uh it's a list of states and set state okay hope you are together up to there and state uh, set state so you have that list then goes, then you say is equals to use state and then you initialize the state and then don't forget to put the you know what do you call the semicolons then you put that the semicolon and now you have to return it what do you want the the it to do what do you want it to do you want to return it okay you want to return something and to return something you return something as a list what do you call it yeah you use this parenthesis you use two parentheses you can return a, 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 a division which is a div for those who understand now you understand the html now this is where you start seeing as if you are using uh, uh, you're using uh, what we call the javascript and html and that's why it comes in but this is called jsx not html remember don't forget don't you ever forget because once you forget that now you be it's become a problem because you are going to have a lot of bugs in this very simple error syntax problem and you're not going to have uh, everything come down crushing crushing everything <laughs> actually today is friday it's friday and it's very early in the morning but i know i know most of you pretend as if um, you go or you have party all throughout that's a lie you know you don't you don't do that you need to work and then the evening that's when you go to have fun if you do if you really do and there are those uh, who don't but different you know you see life is short i don't know how short for the time uh, that for the time we are here why can't we make sense of it and some javascript some react you know do something with your life man that's it at the point so guys that's what i've learned so far next time next video i'll be sharing now from here what next what did i create and i'll maybe try to compare this uh, framework with um, another framework uh, called uh, django in python which actually i use in backend but i still have a bit of uh, uh, ability to create uh, what we call the user interface and so it's uh, it, there's a way you can incorporate html in it to uh, html and css in it to create you know like the front end but it's, it's not that interesting it's something interesting you know you have to it's javascript is the language of the internet all the web you know to rules the world it's good to know javascript trust me yeah it can do a lot of actually it used to be a language of uh, you know they call dummy language dummy 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 is like a you know trial something kids kiddish kids language but trust me this language is man is you know no 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 this language is uh, you know something there's something in it you know so guys that it's so i don't want to make a very long video but next time i promise you i will, we will do very, very very great things here and i will show you so until next time bye bye like is free subscribe is free uh, comment is free um sharing is free yeah so see you next time